Hello, hello. Welcome to the Leadership Forum live stream. Today we are talking all about how to speak to the right audience, especially if you have evolved over time. So I'm going to hop Hold on for a minute here while we wait for Marie to join us. Um, Once she is here, we're going to dive right into this topic. And this is a really important topic, guys, because our audience does evolve over time. And sometimes we have more control over that than other times. And we'll talk about that today. And it's important to make sure that your message as you evolve as an entrepreneur really is attracting the right people. So we're going to talk about three key things today. We're going to talk about how to shift your audience without feeling like you're abandoning anyone. We're going to talk about how to know when you're serving the right audience. A little off. And we're going to talk about why your messaging is everything when it comes to making sure that you're talking to the right people and bringing the right people into your circle. Hey, Marie. Hey, Jesse. How's it going? Pretty good. How's it going with you? Good. I was just going over the three topics that we're talking about and mentioning that we don't always have control over how our audience shifts. Um, This is true. (laughs) (laughs) For sure, right? Um, But I think also there are times where we have more control over it than we realize and we're actually kind of paralyzed by that. So we can dig into what that looks like a little bit too. Totally. So let's talk a little bit about audience in a broad spectrum real quickly. Um, I think it's worth kind of going into our little spiel over what an audience is and isn't, because this is something that we've found over the years defines us in a slightly different way than some other strategists you may come across. So if you've been in the entrepreneur sphere for a while, you know all about the ideal client avatar and how there are exercises to find the perfect dream client. And one of the things we noticed years ago when we first entered the space is that there were a lot of people who were sort of paralyzed by that activity. It worked really well for some people, but then there was a group over here who tried the activity And it actually halted their growth instead of making it easier to reach their audience. So we came up with our own system, which is the target audience. And it really is just like a target, like thinking about a dartboard. And yes, you have your ideal client in the center of that dartboard, and that is the perfect client. But we know that this is not a perfect world. So there are going to be people who may not fit the description, may not check all the boxes, but still are amazing clients. And that might be a ring outside of the dartboard, another ring back, and then another ring back. And just like when you're playing darts, if you don't hit the bullseye, you still get points. These are still people that are worth working with, that are worth your time and your energy and your skills, and that you can evolve amazing relationships with over time. So when we talk about audience, we're talking about a larger group than you may think of when you're thinking of ideal client. For sure. Also, just as an FYI to you, um, I wasn't able to get the link. So if you want to share this. <laughs> yes, I was, I I was think trying to talk while you shared. I know. I appreciate that so much. I know what you're doing, but alas, I think because I didn't start it, maybe. In any case. Okay. Um, well, it's your turn to talk while I share. That is all good. I can do that. <laughs> so, um, Yeah. So in terms of, you know, where you are in the dartboard right now, obviously the closer into the center we can be, the more effective we can be at reaching the right people. And what we mean by the right people is just the ones that are most likely to purchase from us, the ones that are most likely to really resonate with our message, those that are most likely to be impacted by it and be able to take that and go do something with it, right? That this is like the message they need. This is the help they need, the product they need, whatever it is. Um, But yes, so this is, I think the key though, is thinking about it in terms of a target rather than an ideal client when it comes to our question number one, which is how to shift your audience without feeling like you're abandoning anyone. Because maybe those people who used to be at the bullseye of your target are now maybe on ring two or three, Um, and you have a new bullseye, but that doesn't mean that you're necessarily leaving those people in the dust. The other piece of this though is we cannot be for everyone. If we are trying to be for everyone, unless I guess we're 
I don't know, Starbucks or something. <laughs> but even then, Starbucks is not for everyone, right? I'm not a coffee drinker. Like, I'll go. In fact, I have to go later today <laughs> for, for a meeting. Um, and, you know, I'll find something. But it doesn't matter, basically, is my point, how broad you are as a business owner um, or as a leader. Your message isn't going to be for everybody. The services you provide, the the whatever you're delivering, the value you're delivering isn't for everybody. And that is okay. And when we try to make it for everybody and we try to make sure that every single person is not offended by what we say or really resonates with what we say, A, our message is going to become so diluted that it's not going to make sense anymore. And B, the other problem with this um, is that we are less able to serve the people that we really want to serve because that targeted messaging isn't being delivered to them. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's a case here to be made too for it's not your responsibility to accommodate or not a certain subset of your audience. Um, so what I mean by that is not that, you know, you're mean to them and like, oh, I don't serve you anymore. Um, what I mean by that is we as business owners are responsible for providing the services that we are most equipped to, survive, to provide to the audience members that are most equipped to receive. And if there are people that fall outside of that dartboard, it's up to them to decide if they want to step onto the board or not. It is not our responsibility and I feel like this whole idea of feeling like you're abandoning someone comes up a lot when we're going through a pivot or a micro pivot, which we've talked about in previous episodes, because when we shift, our audience shifts. And that can come with these feelings of guilt. We felt it ourselves when we made a shift into talking about leadership, where we knew we were going to be leaving some people behind, and we felt guilty about that. We were like, oh, but we want to help them. We want to work with them because they're amazing people, and we've loved having them in our audience. But at the end of the day, it's not our decision. It's our decision to talk about the things that make sense for us as business owners, and it's their decision to stick around or not. Exactly. And too, how much easier is it to communicate with and have an impact on the lives of people who want to hear from us and for whom the message is just naturally resonant than the people that are pretty skeptical, right? Or like, that's just not the good fit. I mean, think about like a movie, maybe, you know, you're, you're, you're going on a date with somebody who wants to go to a, a genre of movie that you really hate. <laughs> and it's going to be so much harder for you to really enjoy that. Like maybe the movie will win you over, but it's going to have to be pretty good. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if it's, if they're like, Hey, I heard you really love rom-coms or I heard you really love sci-fi. Let's go do that. You're probably going to be a lot more on board with it. Right. And it's going to take a lot less convincing. So it's the same with the message in our business. If we go ahead and say like, hey, this is who I'm speaking to, and this is who I'm not speaking to, but I'm not being mean to you. Like, you can come join. You can come hang out, but, like, this is who it's for and this is who it's not for. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, this is just that question of, of transparency, and I think we come back to this, like, every single live stream, transparency and communication, right? So this is that how to shift your audience without feeling like you're abandoning people is just pull back the curtain on it. Let them know the shift's happening, even if it feels kind of messy, even if you're in the middle of it, and just say, like, hey, this is happening. I'm still working through it. Um, and it's, you know, it's not directed at anybody. This is just the next evolution in my message and in my services or my business or my leadership platform. And I'd love to invite you to come along for the ride. Yeah, absolutely. And being open personally to that mindset shift of, you're not abandoning anyone. You're allowing yourself to evolve in the way that makes sense for you as an entrepreneur. Um, that word abandon, I feel like, is very charged, and it's also very common. We, especially if we tend to have more of that sort of nurturer uh, characteristic, we want to take care of our people. And that's a great strategy, and it's a great way of existing is by taking care of your people. Our business is built on relationships, not on numbers. So taking care of your people is absolutely something worth doing as long as you're taking care of yourself too. It's that whole idea of you can't fill someone else's cup if your cup is empty. And that goes for this topic too. If you're busy serving everyone, then the people who need you most it's going to be diluted. 
your ability to serve them is going to be watered down by your attempts to try and serve everyone. So keep those people who are more towards the center of your target in mind, because those are the people who are going to benefit most from you. And those are the people who are looking for you. Those are the people who want to work with you. And those are the people who, when you guys work together, real magic happens, but only if you have the energy to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so key, right? Um, I know that, you know, growing up as, um, you know, a little Baptist Southern girl, (laughs) there was a lot of like caretaking of other people, right. Sort of built into, to my life and society. And, and that can be a really beautiful thing. And it can really be something where you're able to develop great relationships. You're able to help support other people. Um, And it doesn't mean, and I think this is where I sort of didn't understand until later, it doesn't mean that just because um, I want to be supportive of other people, that's different from caretaking their needs to the point where they actually lose their agency. And it also doesn't preclude me from asking support, asking for support or taking self-care time for myself when I need it. So, you know, again, I think that's such a great reminder, Jesse. So Let's talk about that center of the bullseye. How do we know that we're there? (laughs) Um, And I think this is where sort of that passion and purpose come together because we need to make sure that like we're doing something we love and we have a message that we love and we can talk about, yes, passionately. We can actually talk about the feelings behind it. We can talk about the value and the benefits of it. Um, And it also needs to be something viable, right? Like there needs to be both of those elements in place, but when they are, that's when we're able to say like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is why it works. This is why I'm excited about it. How are you feeling about it? And when they're feeling the same way about it, you've probably found your center of the bullseye there. Yeah, totally. And um, this is sort of a, a less positive spin to it, but I think equally important, which is when you're looking at how to know if you're serving the right audience, it's important to pay attention to red flags. And, you know, no one likes red flags because that generally is a negative thing. But when a red flag happens, take note of that because usually that marks a diversion from your target that you may have not known existed before. There are a lot of times as we grow as entrepreneurs where we are tested in ways that we did not expect when we started. And a lot of times that is in a client relationship or an audience relationship. It doesn't even have to be someone you're actively working with. It could just be someone in your sphere where something feels off for a reason. It doesn't have to be an antagonistic reason. It doesn't have to be like, oh, they're being mean to me. It could be something very subtle and small. But if you notice that something is off and take note of it, that's a good indicator that maybe you're not attracting the exact right people for some reason. And that's just sort of your first clue to start digging into those reasons. And you may find that maybe they are the right people, but you haven't set up the boundaries to make that a healthy relationship. So it may not be a them thing. It may be just some more work you need to do on taking a look at those boundaries yourself. Um, Maybe, you know, they're pushing, pushing and like asking for things at midnight on Saturday, but that's because you never mentioned to them, Hey, I only work Monday through Friday, nine to five. Right. And so they don't know and they're working and just because they're sending you a message doesn't necessarily mean that they expect you to drop everything right then and answer them. Right. So there, there's probably some more communication that could go into place or some boundaries, but yes, you're right. Sometimes they're just like, Hey, this is not good. Like this person doesn't pay invoices, period. Probably not in the middle of your bullseye, right? Because it shows a fundamental lack of respect for you. Um, Whatever it is, like there's probably, there's every bit, you know, you could be giving someone the benefit of the doubt and still things aren't working out. And it doesn't matter how many boundaries you erect and it still just feels off. Or maybe they're just, maybe it's not even a, they don't respect you thing. Maybe it's just, they're not in the right place. Right. So this was what we were, what we were dealing with, with when we shifted our audience to start talking about leadership more. Um, And yes, we're still talking to entrepreneurs, but those entrepreneurs aren't necessarily the ones who um, all came with us. When we started talking about leadership, they were like, well, you know, why do I need to do that? I'm not really in that place right now. I don't really want that. 
that's totally fine, right? Like, that's okay. And, and so what you were saying earlier, Jesse, about how they can choose to step onto the target of our target audience or not. And it's not our responsibility to, like, drag them with us, right? Um, we just sort of make our own our own claim and, and are communicative about it. And if we're loving and, and um, you know, not a jerk about it, then mm -hmm. I think we've done what we need to do at that point, right? The other piece of the course is just part of the messaging is just be clear about why you're doing it and, you know, dig into that a little bit to allow them to understand. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, Tanya. You can't pour from an empty cup. Um, it's so true in so many different respects, but especially with your audience, because that's a relationship. And I think the quickest way to get to an empty cup is by mismanaging relationships. Mm. Um at, at least for an introvert, um, maybe different for an extrovert, but in my experience. Hey, Lemmy, thanks for joining. Um, I want to add, too, that a good way to kind of reevaluate whether you're talking to the right audience or not is also to look back at the foundation of your business in terms of your mission and your vision. So it's not just about who you're talking to, but it's also the what you're talking about and why you're talking about it. So if you have a vision for your business that involves a certain trajectory, once you're clear on that trajectory, you can then ask, okay, who are the people that are needed to get from where I am to where I want to go? And that's sort of a, a almost a circuitous way to look at audience, but it, it's a part of the equation because if you're just looking at right here, right now, who I want to work with, you're not taking into account the potential growth that you want to see in your business. Totally agree. Totally agree. Hey, Rachel, thanks for joining. Um, so can we talk about why messaging is the key? <laughs> it's like everything, right? For when we're trying to make sure we have targeted those right people, we're able to communicate with them. I think my favorite analogy that you have around this, Jesse, is the analogy of the bridge. Yes. So I've talked about this a lot. If you've watched our other live streams, you're probably sick of hearing it, but I'm going to keep <laughs> repeating it because it's really important. Um, and that is building a bridge between yourself and your audience. So when you start out as an entrepreneur, a lot of times you hear about, okay, find your audience's language, speak their language, know their pain points, know their frustrations, speak to them so that they recognize in you that you're talking about the things that they're thinking about because then they're more likely to buy from you all of which is totally true. But this is one of the things that really annoyed me when we first entered the space. <laughs> Nobody is talking about how to do that, but also be yourself in the context of messaging. So yes, you need to speak your audience's language, but what about your own language? And what about making sure that you are building a bridge between your language and your audience's language so that yes, they're recognizing in themselves all of the things that you're talking about, but they're also recognizing that it's coming from you who have a unique and innovative way of approaching it and a personality that meshes with them and a voice that makes sense to them. So that's why we advocate for things like building your own brand word bank, why we have our copywriting character quiz as a tool to help you identify your voice archetype. We created all of those things to help you build that bridge because if your messaging is only to your target audience's pain points and frustrations and benefits and has none of you in it, well, they might feel like a perfect fit on paper, but then they might start working with you and you might realize there's actually a total personality clash because there are different types of people who need the same thing. And you want to make sure that the people who you're going to work with well are the ones that are coming to you. Absolutely. And I think the other side of this can happen too, right? I think especially with entrepreneurs who've been at it for a while, they feel like they've got their voice nailed down. You know, at this mm -hmm. point, that may have been a frustration early on, but at this point, like they've got that going for them, but maybe their audience has shifted a little bit like ours did when we decided to start talking about leadership in a more public way and actually make it one of our content pillars. And it turns out, okay, that's another time where we have to kind of redefine the voice and figure out what the bridge now looks like. Do we need to add a few more pieces to that? And I think ultimately the easiest way and the most effective way to build that bridge is actually to build it out of emotion 
So what are the things that they're feeling right now? And then do you have pieces of your story or of stories that you can share with them that have the same feelings? Now, it doesn't have to be um, a parallel exact carbon copy um, experience as theirs. Totally fine if they have a different experience. But if they're feeling the same frustration that you can talk about feeling, they're going to feel heard and understood. This is Let me be clear. This is not about emotional manipulation. This is about helping someone genuinely feel heard and understood. So it's taking a look at your own story, taking a look at your own voice, communicating that, but then selecting the pieces of it that really do match up with what they're feeling so that then they're like, oh man, he gets me, she gets me this is perfect. Like, this is the solution I need because it really is. This is not again about duping people. It's about connecting with the right people so that then they're like, yeah, this is, this is the thing I need because it is. Yeah. Cause it all comes back to those relationships, right? It's about building relationships, not just getting a bunch of numbers in the door. Um, almost I mean, all of the people we talk to, whether you're a service provider or you're uh, delivering products or anything along those lines, whatever business you are running, you are running it with relationships top of mind. If you're not, then you are not on our target board. Like you are not (laughs) part of our audience because that is not a primary focus for you. And there are perfectly fine business models out there that do not have a relationship focus, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about people who really are embracing that leadership role within their business, which means that the relationship is a critical piece. And it means that your relationship needs to be constantly evaluated. It means that your message constantly needs to be evaluated. And this is this is the key to that messaging to attract the right people conversation is that it's never done, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, but there's no end destination. <laughs> where, where you are right now is not where you're going to be in six months, which is not where you're going to be in a year. You're constantly honing, constantly refining, constantly adding and deleting and repurposing and shifting. And that's the beauty of entrepreneurship is that you are a mobile, flexible business owner and your audience is also mobile and flexible. So you have to constantly check in with your messaging to make sure that you are speaking to who you want to speak to now not who you were speaking to six months or a year or five years ago. Exactly. So if that's feeling a little overwhelming, (laughs) we've got a solution for you. (laughs) Um, So we are really excited to be providing three focused days, August. That's this month. We're in August now, August 13th or 15th. Yes, we are. Um, This is called the Evolved Entrepreneur Challenge. And this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, my audience has evolved, or maybe other pieces of my business have evolved, or maybe I've evolved, right? Like I've been doing a lot of self-development here and I, I'm really growing and changing because if there's anything that I think all of us who are entrepreneurs have experienced, if we've been in the game long enough, it's that entrepreneurship is a life changer and that it requires yeah. of us more introspection and self and growth and development than many, many things in our lives, right? So I'm not going to say than anything, but it's up there. It's way up there. And I, you know, I personally hadn't bargained on that when we first started our business eight years ago, but it's so true. So if you feel like any of those pieces have shifted, you, your business, your audience, anything in the middle, that's who this challenge is for. This challenge is for entrepreneurs who've been at it long enough to experience that change, but their messaging hasn't caught up yet. So I'm going to give you the link to sign up and then we're going to talk a little bit more about it. But if you're interested, it's a free challenge, August 13th through 15th. And you can sign up by going to northstarmessaging.com slash evolve, northstarmessaging.com slash evolve. Yeah. And so this is called the Evolved Entrepreneur Challenge for a reason. It's for the people who have been in it long enough to know that they are not the same entrepreneur they were the day that they decided, hey, let's start a business, Um, which can happen very quickly. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you've been in business for eight years like us, but it may mean that you've been in business for six months and things have changed drastically. You've gained traction. You've gotten a better idea of who you don't want to serve, what you do and don't want to do. 
but you're not sure that it's accurately reflected in your content. And you're not really sure how to break down that journey of figuring out how to reflect it in your content. So this challenge is broken into three days, and each of the three days we're going to focus on a different component of messaging, of entrepreneurship, and of leadership. All those three things tie together, and we're looking at three different aspects of them and how they're represented in your, mes in your message. You're going to be asked to celebrate where you are because you need to celebrate. That's absolutely critical, is recognizing that you've come so far and had so much growth. So we're going to ask you to look at where did you start and where are you now so that you can see how far you've come. And we're going to ask you to look at your content and evaluate what might need a bit of an upgrade, what might need to maybe slide off and disappear, what might need to be created from scratch, what isn't represented currently that needs to be represented. And over the course of three days, you're going to have an opportunity to build a roadmap moving forward so that when you leave the challenge, you have marching orders and dates on the calendar and an idea of where to start as you revamp your message to reflect where you are now. Exactly. So we're not going to be dictating a roadmap to you because every entrepreneur and every leader is different. You're going to have a chance to strategically decide where do you want to make some critical updates to your messaging so that they, so that your messaging better reflects who you are now. This may be something where you decide to cut something that you have. So maybe, you know, there's just some old stuff that's hanging out there that like just is super not true for you anymore cool. This is your opportunity to cut that out. Maybe there's some stuff in there that just needs a little bit of a refresh or maybe a little bit of a repurposing upgrade. Cool. Maybe there's something that you want to create for the first time. Awesome. You'll have a chance to figure that out and to determine where's the best use of your time and energy so that you can create a message as a business owner that better reflect, reflects who you are now as opposed to who you were the last time you gave it a refresh. Absolutely. And if you sign up, you are also entered to win some prizes, including up to three months of messaging support from us. So lots of good prizes. Um, that's not the only prize, but that's sort of the grand prize is three months of support from us. And there are lots of different ways to earn prize points. The first way to win a prize point is just by signing up. So if you go to northstarmessaging.com slash evolve, you can sign up. The second way to start earning prize points before the challenge even starts is by sharing that link with your friends and having them mention in the Facebook group where we're hosting the challenge that you referred them. And that will give you prize points as well. We'll be doing drawings throughout the challenge for various prizes. So the more points you collect, the greater your chance of winning. Exactly. But the greatest prize of all, am I right, is having a message that feels really great for you to have a roadmap, to not feel super overwhelmed, to not have, you know, dogs barking, dogs barking. <laughs> to not feel super overwhelmed by the process of digging into your message. So excited to have you guys joining us. Thanks for joining today live, everybody who's been here. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up in the comments. If you're watching on the replay or now, happy to answer those. We'll be checking back in for your comments and questions. And we can't wait to see you there. Again, it's a free challenge, northstarmessaging.com slash evolve for evolved entrepreneurs who just need to reflect that evolution in their message. Can't wait to see you there. All right. Talk to you guys next week, guys.